Next, you're gonna look at rough plumbing underneath the house or foundation because you don't wanna be replacing a bunch of stuff and then having to go back through and, oh, I should have ran a gas line. Oh, should have ran some new water lines. Um, getting your electrical check, depending on what year it was built, you may have to re-electric, uh, run the electric of the house. And then they're gonna be knocking holes and that'll be, the, that'll be in a step coming up, but. Well, you're talking about keep putting things up to code? No, 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 I'm just saying, yeah, most, you're gonna need things to be up to code if you're, say, doing some new construction, um, say you wanted to build on an addition, that may trigger a, a something in the permit department where all of a sudden now they want their electrical upgraded. Putting on new ACs, that can be a cause to have a new upgraded electrical panel. So all these things need to be thought about beforehand. So framing, subflooring, so repairing of the subfloor, minor replacement of damaged two by fours, you're gonna to wanna to go through that next. The roof decking, installing new roof decking, exterior doors, you wanna start with the exterior, of course, making sure the house is all secured. Um, now, is this the order in which work is done in? Or yeah, this, this is, is the order in which work is performed. So, but I'm, I'll, I guess I've been kind of thinking like I'm walking the property and I'm looking at these But things. you're going to be looking at all these things. So I'm kind of giving you two birds with one. Um, we're going we're gonna to capture two birds with one hand of feed. Good. That's better than killing two birds <laughs> with a stone, for sure. So these steps, this is the step process of how you want to actually do your rehab, the order in which you want to do things to save you the most time and money. Now, these are also, I'm covering, I'm recapping what you actually are going to be looking at in things that are going to need to be done. Now also, I mean, like we talked about, because you can't always get on the roof, you can't always look at the subflooring, right? right? You can't always see some of these right. things. So um, some of it is, I think I heard it best. There's this one investor I love working with, you know, Jeff, uh, he says you need time on the water. Yes. There's a lot of things you just can't train somebody because you just have it from experience of being a, he's, cause he's a fisherman as well. And you just, you know, you can't tell everybody all the, all the secrets that you need to know in one shot on how to fish. <clears throat> a lot of it comes with just time on the water. Time on the water and masterminding on the situation. So we have people that bring us properties every single week, every single day, and they're like, hey, can you take a look at this video? Can you take a look at these pictures? Can you look at this? What do you think of this? And uh, that's where that whole relationship, that mastermind aspect, because then in the private masterminds, we'll put it, you know, we'll bring, have people to bring in uh, their properties, and then everybody's kind of looking at it. Everybody's analyzing that. So if that's something you're looking for, we're gonna talk about that a little bit more later too. Uh, windows, window glass. So are, you, are they single pane? Is everybody there upgrading to dual pane windows, vinyl, aluminum, installing window locks? That's a huge thing. So are we gonna to have to redo the siding, insulation, the house wrap, anything along those lines? Exterior trim, so the fascia, like we we're talking about, the George Abs um, exterior trim. Next, you're going to want to move into the roof, getting the roof repaired. Because I'll tell you what, if you start on the inside and then all of a sudden they have to replace a couple things, next thing you know, you got insulation and drywall coming through your bathroom. And That's you, happened. Before. That has happened. <laughs> uh, I think, I mean, I think the guy was on a soft spot and he fell through, but you know, came in there and, wow, good thing we really haven't done much in this bathroom yet because they just helped demolish the bathroom. <laughs> I just, they say, well, you, you got a problem with the roof and it's like, I couldn't see it, you know, and they were, sh I mean, I wasn't up on the roof, but showing pictures. And then once the guy fell through the roof, I was like, oh, now I see where, <laughs> where the problem is. <laughs> Um, next, addressing the fireplace if you have one in there. Oh, but that brings up another point. One of the things I don't, I don't feel like you shared here, insurance. Before we've even started this, right, we have insurance because when that guy fell through, that, we're not going to be liable for any of his injuries. We, we're we're going to have uh, insurance. Absolutely. Place. Absolutely. Yeah, you're going to need your insurance for sure. Rough HVAC, so if you're going to be running any new uh, heating, uh, 
um, heating, cooling systems, if you gotta be moving anything like that, you're gonna wanna move into that next. After that, plumbing in walls, in the attic, running of water lines. A lot of times, uh, I know out here we have polybutylene piping where it needs to be changed over to copper piping. So that's something that Oh, and they have to, did, haven't we had a couple of situations where they had to break up the foundation oh, to yeah. get access to a pipe to... And imagine if you did the flooring before you, had, you went that. <laughs> so, like I said, these are all the steps in which you want work performed. Because let's say that you're acting like the GC and where you're just hiring a bunch of subcontractors to do it all. That can be done as well. It depends on how much time energy you have. Um, but with the powers... The power of what we understand, we, un we don't do our taxes ourselves, but we understand the principles that need to be done. And so when you understand what needs to be done, then you don't get taken advantage of. Let me ask you another question. It kind of goes back, because I keep thinking about uh, Nasty Fran's question, because I, mean, I just hear that from everybody. And that is a common question. But I guess for me, like I'm thinking, when do you go with a handyman versus when do you go with a licensed contractor? Ooh, that's a great question. Because you're uh, showing us a lot of stuff. Is a lot all of, of these, this general contractor work, or a, could any of this be done with a handyman? A lot of these things um, in the beginning are going to require somebody licensed. HVAC is going to be requiring a license. Um, electrical and plumbing. Those are the big three. Um, now, the roofing part? The roofing part, yeah, you're going to want to be, depending on what it is, though. If you're just recoding the roofing, if you're just replacing a couple of shingles, then uh, we, we don't need to use, we can use a handyman for that. If you're actually replacing the whole roof, you're gonna wanna use a licensed contractor for many different reasons. Um, one being the insurance part, and two, that they're knowing what they're gonna be doing because it's big enough job that you don't wanna play around with that having um, a handyman do it. So I would say a good rule of thumb is any job under a thousand dollars is very easy for a handyman to do. Now, any job that you had to pull a permit for has to be a licensed yes, contractor. Yes, has to be a licensed contractor. Um, and yeah, do I follow all these rules to a T? Yes, you do. Yes, <laughs> yes. Especially on, when we're talking on YouTube, yes. <laughs> Bathtub, shower pans, replacing bathtubs. Uh, now, like for example, if you're t if you're tiling a shower, that could be a handyman. That doesn't need to be somebody expensive. There's a lot of things that you know. If you do a general contractor, he's gonna he's gonna get a lot of handymen in there. He's gonna have a lot of guys that work underneath him. He may subcontract out some other things, and so it just really depends. Um, there's also the extra cost of having them manage your project, but you can have one of three things. Like my buddy Richie says, you can either have it um, cheap, quick, or done right. You just can't have all three. You can have two. So you can have it done right and, and cheap, but it's going to take a long time. You could have um, it cheap and done quick if you do it cheap and do it quick then it's probably going to be done wrong <laughs> you need a dry erase board for this <laughs> yes we need a dry erase for that that's a whole other training for another day yeah but um yeah using a contractor is it's it's quickest but it's and it's the gonna be done right but as long as you use a reputable one um but it's going to cost the most money you know one of the things i've noticed <laughs> If you use a handyman, it's like your material costs seem to be so much more expensive. But when you use a general contractor, your material costs are so much more inexpensive. But you pay more because you're paying for all that the labor right. and expense. So it's it's real it's weird how how cost varies uh, with, with all of this. And it depends on what you're doing. If you're going to be doing a lot of projects, sometimes you're going to want to be buying it yourself in bulk. So, you know, you buy, instead of a small pack of nails, you buy a big pack of nails. If you're gonna be doing a couple of different projects and having the handyman use your materials and you just, I don't like doing hourly. I really don't. Um, paying somebody hourly means that they're going to what? 
What's the incentive for them to do it fast? There's no incentive for them to move quickly. Paying per job is the best way to go. Um, when they get done, then they get paid, and then they move on to the next task. There's also a carrot and a stick approach you put to the handyman that we work with. Oh, absolutely. You could give them a little money up front, and then they won't get the rest until they're done. And even better, you need to do this with both your handyman and your contractor. What's the penalty if it's not done on time? And what is the reward if it's done on time? So carrot, imagine, carrot okay, so na uh, um, Nancy Fran, you were talking about this. Bringing your contractors in on the deal, talking to them about different aspects of, let me, let me tell it this way, sharing in on the profit sometimes. Let's say you're doing a fix and flip or a, a rehab of some sort. We'll talk about this. Hey, this is the budget, but if you come in you know, under budget, whatever you come down cheaper, we're going to split the difference. So that's almost like a bonus to them. If they save you $20,000, then they get a $10,000 bonus. We had a, a contractor, uh, a handyman on our last project do the flooring and the painting for a really large house and uh, for the and materials and everything, bid in uh, $10,000. And we, and we paid a uh, $500 bonus for getting done on time. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, rough electrical work, exterior masonry, and then any insulation that needs to be fixed in the walls. All right, so we're halfway through this right now, guys. Um, I want to just talk to you a little bit real quick about the fact that wealth is a mindset. Knowing all of these things, it's not something that takes two days to learn. You're not going to learn everything you need to learn on this mastermind either. So education is not learning of facts, but it's the training of your mind to think. And that's why we're dedicated to coming to you guys each and every week to start building those blocks even further. But I got to let you guys know that there's a lot of stuff that doesn't take place on YouTube. Then there's a lot of in-depth, real down deep work that goes into um, building, you know, a large successful business, real estate business and empire. I want to just mention real quick, we talk about the essentials, and this is part of the real estate investing education. What Joseph was mentioning earlier, real estate foundations, knowing a lot of these things, you know, knowing a lot of the beginner aspects of, you know, we're talking about the rehab, but what do you do before you get to that point? Um, the basic building box of investing. We use self-directed IRAs. That's a fantastic <clears throat> way to leverage money for using to invest in real estate. It's I mean, one of, one of my favorite classes. It absolutely is. We we manage hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of seven hundred and thirty six thousand to be exact. Seven hundred and thirty six thousand dollars <laughs> currently of retirement funds that are just straight somebody's retirement account. It's the biggest pool of funds that are sitting out there. Nobody's touching it. And right now, it's it, we're not going to go into a forecast of the uh, stock market, but if you're interested in the stock market, if you have money in the stock market, you need to be paying attention and potentially moving to cash. Um, we're going we're gonna to have to do a video on like the current state of GDP and where is everything sitting. All right. So, but as a successful business owner, real estate investor, you need to be aware of everything that's taking place because it can affect your business. Real estate, uh, self-directed IRAs. That's amazing. We, uh, Chris Albin, we've talked a little bit about him when we were going over subject two, but he talks about all the pitfalls. So we mentioned some things to watch out for, things that we've ran into. He really spent six hours going into all those things for you to watch out. I think they, he also talks a little bit about market analysis. Oh yeah, so. making sure that it's done right. Mm -hmm. um, tax and legal, the structuring of your business. How do you put this business together? How do you protect yourself? What are the tax implications? If you're doing this in your personal name, what type of tax benefit do you have if you, let's say, okay, Mr. Joseph Smith, let's say that um, you're new to real estate investing. Okay. You don't start a business. Okay. You get a house. Yes. You, you buy it, you get the work done. Yes. Um, and you sell it within the first year. You know, you, you've owned it for, let's say, eight months. Okay. You sell it, you make $50,000. Perfect. Is, a, is some of that going to have to go to taxes? Well, I'm going to have to pay property taxes for the time that I owned it. And uh, probably we'll discover that at closing and be shocked 
right. and all my profits getting eaten up there. Uh, but yeah, then the, uh, the IRS has a funny way of seeing that as a additional income that you didn't pay taxes mm. on. Yes, and they like to, uh, that, that fancy word capital gains, <laughs> where they like to take a good portion of that, just like a lottery winning. Um, yeah, I mean, after all those taxes, you could see 40, 45% well, you, you, of that wiped out like that. But was the IRS going to come after you that day? No, no. So you have time to spend it all. You have time to spend it. Mm -hmm. So you, you go out and, you know, you do whatever with those funds. And then all of a sudden, next year's taxes, all of a sudden, you know, well, you, there's yeah, a, a $22,000 tax liability on that. Well, what what will happen with with that is it'll be broken up. It, you won't get slapped with one bill. You'll, you'll get hit with the property right. taxes at closing. Right. And then, um, and then what you'll find because you bought this in your own name is uh you have to report this uh in like I, I, capital gains whatever that is right uh schedule c i don't know i don't i have to go back and look which one that's why you need a good accountant <laughs> but <laughs> but because this has happened to me before right. uh you you know and i just did the capital gains on that uh you're going to get around eight thousand dollars just on that and so you get a lovely letter from the irs uh, that states because you you know if you just do your taxes like you normally do right everyone goes to what H&R Block mm -hmm. or they they do some program and then you, you filed your taxes you think you're done and you get a love letter from the IRS let me tell you what a wonderful feeling that is when you open up the mailbox and there's a letter from the IRS that doesn't sound too pleasant <laughs> and you owe money so what do you do um, well because we have wonderful accountants <laughs> when we bought it in a business, we didn't have any problems. But imagine, you know, you, you did this uh, fix and flip maybe in the summer or the fall of the previous year. That money, you, you got to use that money for different things. And now all of a sudden, uh, $8,000. No payment plan. It's due now. Yikes. That's no fun. That is no fun. It's no fun to make money and then have to pay a bunch of taxes. But, I mean, the goal is to pay a lot of taxes, but the he is to have written off as much as possible first. All right, so Mark Kohler spends two days going over all that beautiful information for you as well. Um, creative acquisitions, we talked about that. We'll dive back into that in some later weeks on creative ways of purchasing properties without using any of your own money or credit. And Deal of Decade dives into searching probate, um, the court system, properties that are tied up in that mess. Negotiating, you're always going to need to be a good negotiator, whether you're negotiating with a buyer, a seller, or just your just your spouse. Negotiations is powerful. Understanding your personal credit. We talk a lot about personal credit as well. If you're in a situation where you're trying to figure out how to get out of debt, make sure you're plugging into our Tuesday night credit banking masterminds. But uh, there's also an in-depth course on how to build uh, grow and repair your personal credit and of course the velocity banking strategy that's really where we got introduced to the whole credit banking strategy was mm. through uh through renatus actually that was pretty phenomenal all of these courses over 60 hours of education weekly group coaching so that's not even including what joseph and i do renatus puts out there all all, all sorts of stuff too and it's only two thousand four hundred ninety seven dollars and of course, you're already 100% approved for a payment plan. Um, so I'm learning how to raise unlimited funds. I'm learning how to save uh, money in my taxes so I keep more of what I make. And then I'm learning how to acquire properties without using any of my own money. Absolutely. And sweep away all my debt with that Velocity Banking course. Yep. All for 2497 bucks. Yep. Man, that's awesome. It's a deal. Now, of course, there's some of you folks, and we're going to get back to the... You know, in just a minute, we're going to get back to the uh, 25 through 50 steps of rehabbing property. Woohoo! Ah, yes. And I'll show you those after photos of that current project. And maybe we'll talk a little bit about what those numbers ended up looking like. But I uh, do need to let you guys know that there's also a whole other aspect. Now, you got to get going in your foundation. Wherever you get started, it's always important. You know, this is a journey. This is a marathon. This is, this is... I've been on this journey for a couple of years now. Same with Joseph. This is not something that is a get rich quick. 
Okay, this is a uh, build a legacy for sure. Six six years going on seven for me. Yeah. And you still got a lot to learn, right? Mm -hmm. Never stop learning. Well, I mean, I, I say I've been investing in real estate for six years, but I've been successfully <laughs> investing in real estate for the last two years. <laughs> <laughs> Lease options, <clears throat> short sales, notes, deeds, liens. Now, when I'm going over these, these are just the category, but inside there's 10, 12 courses that make up those strategies. Fix and flip, which we're talking about today. So rehabbing, fix and flip, two full days, uh, fix and flipping houses, but also two full days of rehabbing. You know, because uh, uh, what's what's the difference between a fix and flip and a rehab? <clears throat> well, I imagine since we just did a fix and flip, which was uh, changing out the flooring and the paint and a couple of fixtures, that that's a fix and flip. So we only put like uh, uh, less than 20000 into it. But the rehab, which we have one of those too, is like a hundred and fifty thousand dollar project where you're doing everything, pulling permits and uh -huh. drafting and all that good yeah. stuff. And so, what's cool is the course. It was planned over six. It was filmed over six months. They used drone footage. What to look for? How does that whole process work? Pretty phenomenal stuff. Multifamily. If you want to get some apartments, commercial real estate. Bonus tracks, you know, they even have our partners in there actually teaching a class on business credit. But I mean, <clears> this is, I mean, there's some phenomenal instructors in this. And I'll, here's some of them. You know, you guys can always go back, watch this video, freeze frame it, and check out some of these individuals. These are true professionals in the world of real estate I, I actually, investing. I actually like those people. Yes. These are not any small time people. These are full time professionals teaching their master class. But I can call. That's one of the great things about that because I'm a student. I actually can pick up the phone and actually speak to them. Absolutely. That's what's amazing. All right. Then there's the new profits, which is all about online driving of sales, building your infrastructure, building your social media, building a, how, to, how to produce wealth in your business. We now have students in fifth, all 50 states, and pretty soon a good friend of yours is going to be enrolled as well. Now, of course, there is the Renatus campus. That's actually in Centerville, Utah, but everything is online now, folks. We don't need any more. Like we said, here's the essentials, 2497, the profits, 3747, the profits combo, which is the essentials and the profits, 6,244, Extreme Plus, where you get basically everything that Renatus has to offer, and all the real estate investing plus the profits gives you the epics combo, so 28741. Can, can I point something out here? Yeah. Now, I know results aren't typical, and, and you're not the average bird, but your first real estate deal that you did once you got into this system, you made net profit $37,000. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, I just think that that blows my mind. And, there's so and it was in people. about two weeks, too. <laughs> <laughs> it was about but, two weeks long. But, I mean, uh, you're, you're such a, a nut when it comes to this uh, education stuff. I mean, you... You're always taking classes. You drive somewhere, you're in the audio books, you're taking classes. But I mean, you also applied it. But that's what I feel like is the power of this education. I mean, one deal. And you already got all, all, all your money you invested back. Yeah, yeah. And it, all I did was actually put it to work. And so can I guarantee that you're going to do that? No, I can't. I don't know. I don't know if you're going to do better, or less, the same. I just don't know. It's up to you. But... If you're open to this, and the other great thing is there's no shortage of money, so we do have billing in place. You know, right here, if you want to get started in the essentials, $399.40 with a monthly payment of $116. Not too bad. Now, if you've been tuning into the credit banking on Tuesday nights, we always encourage some type of line of credit to use the velocity strategy, the credit banking strategy. So if you're going to take that route, you can actually get a substantial cash discount. So that's something else. Now, back to the work, but I want to show you where does all this knowledge come from? Why? That was, how? That was awesome. I, a couple of things. Yeah. First of all, when you showed just that essentials right there, um, when you came up with the payment plan that was there, that works out to $3.86 a day. This one? 
uh, on the, yeah, for the 2,497. Obviously it's less if they make the whole purchase up front and they, uh, we've actually calculated to where it's like a uh, dollar 40 a yeah, day. If, if, if you're using a line of credit. Yeah. But the other thing is, is that uh, Jeremiah Sams has a question and this might fit into your transition okay. to, to back to your steps, but should I ever go over the money I allocated for repairs? So before this project started, Ooh. he budgeted a certain amount of money. When or if ever should I go over what I budgeted? That is a great question. I it, thought segue to whatever you want to talk about. And you're going to get my answer that I like to give Jeremiah all the time. It depends. <laughs> no, no, no. But in all reality, if you've budgeted for a certain cost, this is crucial. Man, I'm getting a little goosebumps because stuff like this, it just fires me up. Okay, imagine if you're using a contractor. What does it say in the contract? What does it say in the contract? Because if they said they're going to do this, this, and this, and then all of a sudden they're coming back and saying, oh, I didn't foresee that I needed to spend this and this and this, are you going to pay them? Are you contractually obligated to pay them or is it their responsibility to pay for that? See, there's a whole nother class that talks about that from Matt Sorensen. This is in the upper division. You gotta be thinking that it's not just, hey, what do we do if we go over? Should we pay more? Well, there's a whole lot of aspects to that because the thing is, you know, who's first and foremost, whose responsibility is it to cover that expense? Was it something that somebody else did that created that expense? Is that protection in your contracts that you have with your handyman, your contractors, your subcontractors? And the question is, is it going to be worth it? So, for example. Oh, okay, go ahead. Hey guys, I hope you're really learning something on this training. Uh, go ahead and hit part three to continue on to finish off the last steps of the training.